Because I represent the North Peninsula Builders Association, and we also oppose the ordinance of the, the interim ordinance based on uh, that it's too broad reaching, and we don't think that it should include res or primary residents. If, uh, if it were to remove the beds and breakfast to the hotels, we would be okay with that. But, uh, but it's uh, the primary residents. Previous speaker said there's not too many people that line up to do 10,000 square foot structure. Just not many people have that kind of the resources to make that happen. And so that not that it really doesn't affect much. It's a very rare person that's going to build it. So if you've got a problem with bed and breakfast, address a bed and breakfast or, or a hotel. So that's it. Thanks. Thanks. Let's the sign up sheet. Is there anybody else wishing to make a comment?
people like me are trained and we spend decades learning how to design projects so that they work within the limitations, the vagaries, and the lack of the code. And if you don't think that somebody can build a structure that fits between the nuances of the inadequacies of the code, <laughs> you haven't been paying attention because it happens all the time. And we don't want our communities, my community, I don't want to you. You know, I raise purebred dogs. I don't want to be abrogated and have my rights set aside because of, of what my neighbors think. I want to be able to build and be a good neighbor. And hopefully this one, you know, this particular applicant that this was initiated on, the toxic candy of the bunch, um, can have that same consideration. I do think it's the role of the DCD to bring public and opposition groups specifically into the process. We should not be at loggerheads. And if there is a problem, if we are at loggerheads, be it 10,000 square feet or 20,000 square feet, and if it's a new beast that you cannot see, like the first time the Indians of South America ever saw a ship, okay, they did not recognize the threat that it meant. Well, that's what this mansion is. It's huge. But is the engineering capacity on the ground for it to not slide in the swim bay? Is it, uh, can it, can you poop that many toilets? <laughs> can you supply the water necessary? All remains to be seen. But we're, what we're lacking is that vision of the county in which something like this would fit in or not fit in one way or the other and would apply to the county as a whole, not our one narrow specific project at hand here. The fellow with the hay, he's in the same, he's going to be caught with the same brush and that's not appropriate. We're not after cows and hay, okay? Never worked. But you're gonna catch him in this particular net because it's not the right net. It's the wrong procedure in my opinion. The solution in the short term to such things is, uh, how about an amendment that allows anything over 10,000 square feet to be a conditional use? And everybody gets in on the process then. But even that would only address the short term issues and would not address the fact that do we want 10,000 square foot plus, plus mansions in Clown County in all zones? Because that's what this interim zoning proposal is about 13 zones might as well be the whole county wherein is that the vision that you want and are you going to wipe out a bunch of barns with cattle feed <laughs> for heaven's sake by supporting this thing the way it's currently written it's not the right advice to solve the problem and i would encourage our commissioners to take a step back consider a conditional use for structures above a certain size it's a very innocuous simple device that doesn't block the public out of the comprehensive planning process. And I will say, I've been in this county since 1986, and since the DCD director position became an elected official, our ability to do futuristic planning, of which some people in this room have spoken to, in my mind correctly, has just collapsed in on itself. We no longer think 20 years in the future, and everybody who lives here knows from the Shoreline Management Act and the Growth Management Act how long it takes any of these devices to create fruition. When do we see the change in the landscape? Well, we addressed sprawl with the Growth Management Act. When you drive between Squim and Fort Angeles, it's gotten bearer and bearer and bearer and bearer as businesses have backed off and, you know, I always do widen. It is definitely reshaping the landscape. This ordinance will reshape, will reshape that, land, that landscape, but is it going to do it in the way that we as a community, as a county population of 70,000, not 10, not 6, not 50, is it really where we want to go? Other questions back to you guys. Are we going to throw the comp plan to the side? It's battered, beaten, inconsistent. The zoning code has been running roughshod over it for 15 years. And in my opinion, it's time we get back to the process of the people's plan. The people's plan is the comp plan. The zoning ordinance is the device by which we implement that plan with the specifics. I'd like to get back to the big planning process if we could, and a vision for all of us. Thank you.